we're here with uh, Chris from a buddy pole. Yeah. So Chris, what we want to ask you is, first of all, what is a buddy pole and how does it differ from, let's say, a, a large antenna? Because I, I understand that these uh, buddy poles can operate on 80 and 40 and 20, right. and we're so used to these uh, HF antennas being so large. Could, right. you, could you fill us in a little bit on how that, what's going on there? Yeah, sure. So it's a, uh, it's a rotatable dipole. Um, straight out of the bag is uh, 2 meters through 40 meters. So we extend the capabilities uh, a number of different ways uh, down to 80 meters. Um, so a shortened dipole so that we can fit it in our customer base, might be using it in a um, uh, HOA type situation or in a campground. Um, 16 feet is the wingspan on that, that basic antenna, the way you, you see behind me here. Um, but we can extend that and we can make full-size dipoles. That's easy to do. We have very lightweight antenna arms that are, that are really very rugged um, in different lengths. And so we have a lot of the guys that are um, maybe more experienced users that want a full-size dipole that, uh, through 20 at least, not, not on 40, um, but that will give you more bandwidth and more efficiency. So we're equivalent to a, we compare ourselves to a full-size wire dipole. Um, when we're doing comparisons, people come and ask about gain and things like that. Um, compared to a full-size wire dipole, even with the shortened version on 20 meters, the 16-foot version, we're down a dB, uh, 1.04 dB. Can't tell to the naked ear. Uh, if you want to do better than that, we, we have longer uh, telescopic whips. Um, we can go full-size, and now there's zero difference between our antenna and a full-size wire dipole. Advantage we have, we can set up anywhere with this system, and we can rotate that antenna very quickly uh, to peak the signal. So um, a number of different advantages to a rotatable dipole. Ours, we can change the arm configurations. Here we have an, like a sloper um, that's going to lower the takeoff angle. Um, now it plays much more like a vertical dipole. I can change that configuration to anything we want. Um, and we have a nice report that comes with the antenna that talks about how and when to change those arm configurations, how it affects the takeoff angles, um, and how it uh, changes the radiation pattern, essentially. Very good, so we, I'm curious, the coils that are inserted, is that part of the kit that will get you on 80 meters on a buddy pole? It can, but typically on 80 meters, people want to run the dipole. I'd like to run the dipole on 80, it's a uh, more, horizontal dipole being just a more efficient antenna here is better it's quieter it's directional um, the reality is we need more height to make that effective right. um, so we typically recommend if you want to work 80 meters with our system that we run it as a vertical and so we'll stack additional parts on top to make that vertical radiator as long as possible we use elevated radials which it's a very efficient ground system um, performs well when you make make it larger uh, in particular. So we have a, uh, a low band coil, um, which is an injection molded um, and it's wound on some ribs. So it's air wound, a little bit more efficient, higher Q, uh, more efficient because it's not, the wire's not sitting on the dielectric. For the lower bands, that's, that's important. Um, but we do real well with the, uh, the low band setups, um, particularly when we can use the longer radiators, uh, our shock corded, rugged shock corded whips that are um, over 16 feet by themselves, folding capacity hats on top. Um, so we do things like that to extend the capability of the system, the efficiency. Well, that's very cool. Well, I noticed you have a show special right behind us and for $399. And what bands does that particular kit cover? Yeah, that's two through 40 meters. And the entire kit um, fits into a a bag like this, uh, this bag, um, so we've got a, a tripod which is a nice stable base and then we've got a 10 foot mast on this one, so that's 24 inches, that fits in any uh, carry-on uh, suitcase, um, easy to travel with, um, and kind of the concept is, you know, on 20 meters I'd want to be, uh, with a horizontal di dipole, I'd want to be a quarter wavelength, that's, that's say 16 feet, we don't quite get there with this, so um, but it's a portable system. So we're looking for areas with relative high points where we can set up. Might be on a balcony, might be on a roof, might be on a, um, just anywhere where the ground slopes away quickly and then we can get that effective height above ground to make it, to get our takeoff angle where we want it to work DX. Right. Yeah. So would it be fair to say, depending on where the individual sets the antenna up, 
the actual RF ground not be might not be where your feet's at. One place it might be two inches below your feet, yeah, and the other right. place it might be You're six feet below your feet. Or something. Yeah, that's right. So it, it's all relative to where you set up. Yeah, very much so. So, um, but the, the the nice thing about having a portable setup that you can take anywhere. I mean, that's that's ten pounds with the coax right. and the tripod and mast and the full right. antenna system. Is you can you can find those places, and we're always looking for that. We take trips down to the Caribbean with our customer base, um, and we. We find villas, we get up on the roof even, just to get additional height. Right, um, we're not right. carrying a, a lot of stuff with us. We're, we're going in suitcases, so right. we don't take you know big long masts and towers and things like that. We're just taking advantage of, of natural terrain. And, Very good. Well, I have heard of some of our members, a couple of them have a, I don't know which buddy pole they have, but I've heard stories. Hey, we walked up the side of the mountain, we went over here, right. so it's very portable. Yeah. Well, very exactly. good. Well, Chris, thank you for your time. We appreciate yeah. it. And uh, we'll look for you in the future. Yeah, thanks for the interview. We're all, make everything up in Oregon. Actually started out of the Bay Area here um, 11 years ago, moved up to Oregon. And uh, everything's uh, made in USA. We make our own cables up there. Um, uh, in the full antenna system, we have our own machine shop. And wow. um, injection molding's done literally uh, right down the street. So a lot of injection molded parts um, done fiberglass reinforced nylon it's it's the good stuff you can drive your vehicle over top of a lot of these parts so <laughs> I, I did not know that you were 100 percent usa yeah the only i didn't know there's, that there's you can say made in usa there's some components that are not it might be a connector i understand that yes. um and then we're increasingly going into electronics based products um which the parts are sourced from all over but right. our enclosures are made extruded locally or you know end caps and things all done uh, locally so we try to try to do as much as we can and a couple reasons for that it's not just a sense of hey let's keep the jobs here it's also um, we can stay on top of the quality that way I can walk down and watch my parts coming off a machine off the injection mold um, I was just up in um, uh, where they do the extrusion for our masts and um, our, our cases aluminum extrusion and watching those parts coming off the extruder we can talk about the process how we can improve it if there's any issues we're not stuck with you know 5,000 parts from China that what do we do with if they're not quite right um, so it's a quality quality thing as well so Great. So because everything's local, you have local control, right. you can catch the problem before it comes and a problem. That's, that's what we try to very do. Very good. So. Well, Chris, thank you very much. We appreciate yeah. your time. Thanks for stopping by.